norma occipitalis let us now study what the norma occipitalis is viewing of the skull or studying of the skull from behind is norma occipitalis if you see from behind the shape it is in the upper part it is somewhat convex and in the lower part it is somewhat flat so the bones which we see in the norma occipitalis are the posterior part of the two parietal bones the occipital bone and mastoid part of the temporal bones on the sides these are the mastoid part of the temporal bones can also be seen now coming to the features here we can see anteriorly the posterior part of the sagittal suture already you know it is a serrated type of joint then we have here this one is the lambdoid suture which articulates with the parietal bone with the occipital bone forming a denticulate type of the joint that means the margin of this bone and the margin of this bone here present a toothed appearance hence forming a denticulate type of the joint the meeting point of this sagittal suture and this lambdoid suture is called lambda and the site of the membranous gap within it is called as the posterior fontanelle which usually closes by 6 months then traced laterally we can see here this one is the parieto mastoid suture and this is the occipito mastoid suture so this lambda uh, is lambdoid suture becomes continuous with the parieto mastoid suture and occipito mastoid suture and the meeting point of these three is called as asterion it is called as asterion close to that you find an foramen here which is called as a mastoid foramen this mastoid foramen transmits an emissary vein which connects the superficial veins of the scalp with the sigmoid sinus present inside traced medially this is the external occipital protuberance which marks the junction of the head with the neck and the most prominent point on this external occipital protuberance we call it as inion and to this external occipital protuberance or from this the trapezius takes origin and the lower part of it gives attachment to the upper part of the ligamentum nuque that ligamentum nuque extends downwards connecting the spines of the upper six cervical vertebra we have two faint lines here superior nuchal line this one this one is the superior nuchal line and to the medial one thirds of the superior nuchal line is the attachment of trapezius that is origin of trapezius laterally it is the sternomastoid which gets inserted and slightly downwards it is the attachment of the splenius capitis just above that there is highest nuchal line to the medial part of the highest nuchal line is the attachment of the epicranial aponeurosis and to the lateral part it is the origin of the occipital belly of occipito frontalis this is all about the norma occipitalis